Hi, I'm Mrs Alexander, the Careers Advisor for Key Stage 5. As students prepare for their upcoming university education, it is crucial to understand the financial aspects attached to further study. As parents, it's natural to feel concerned about the financial burden of student debt on your child's shoulders. However, it's important to remember that student loans should be seen as a graduate tax rather than a daunting debt. During this presentation, we will explore the various options available to help fund your child's higher education and ensure you have the tools and knowledge to make informed decisions. We will cover the tuition fee loan and maintenance loan, as well as other sources of financial support. We'll look at how to apply for a student loan and discuss student loan repayments and interests. As you can see on this slide here, this is the student finance overview um, pie chart, and there are various sources of financial support to help students cover tuition fees and living costs. These include the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan, additional support in the form of the Disabled Students Allowance and Dependents Grant, the NHS Learning Support Fund and Bursaries and Scholarships. You'll note that family is also included in this pie chart as family members are often expected to contribute financially, which includes helping with accommodation expenses and general living costs. Universities charge students a yearly tuition fee and students can expect to pay the maximum of £9,250 a year for full time courses with slightly less for part time and slightly more for the accelerated courses. If a student opts to include a year abroad or a work placement year as part of their studies, the tuition fee is reduced. This makes it more financially accessible for students to gain valuable international experience or gain practical work experience in their chosen fields. Students can sometimes be paid for their work placement years as well. Fees may be higher at private universities and lower for HE study in colleges. Students are not expected to pay their fees up front and most students opt to take out the tuition fee loan to cover this cost. A tuition fee loan, fee loan <coughs> covers 100% of fees at publicly funded UK universities and is not based on household income. It's paid directly to the university from Student Finance England. Students need to reapply each year for this and they repay this after university, depending on their earnings. Students can also opt to take out the maintenance loan. The amount they get depends on household income and where they live and study. It's paid directly to the student's bank account in three instalments throughout the academic year. Just like the tuition fee loan, students need to reapply for this each year. The amount that they receive can change each year and it may not cover all of their living costs. Just like the tuition fee loan, this is repaid after university, depending on earnings. The maintenance loan is divided into two parts. When students are opting to take out the maintenance loan on the online application, they have a choice. They can take out the fixed rate amount, which is the um, set amount that elig all eligible students can receive regardless of their household income, or they can opt for the higher amount, which is a means tested rate, which takes into account the student's household income. Students under 25 are usually classed as dependent. For dependent students, the household income is worked out by the total ta taxable income of their parents for the previous year before they go to university. So for 2025 entry, the 2023-2024 tax year is used. If parents are separated, it is the parent that the student usually lives with whose household income is taken into consideration. If that parent has a partner who lives in the same home, the partner's income is also included. If for some reason the household income has decreased from the last year by at least 15%, then you can ask for a current year income assessment. So if a job's changed or you've um, or if somebody's lost a job, then rather than looking at the previous year, you can ask to be assessed for your current situation. This chart here just gives an overview of the amount of loans that students get depending on the household income. You'll note that the tuition fee loan stays the same because that is not um, related to household income. The first part of the maintenance loan that students can opt, which all students are eligible for, as long as they're eligible for finance, you see the, the amounts along the bottom here. So for a household who earns £70,000 or more, or for somebody that's not declaring their household income, all students can borrow these amounts that are along the bottom here. So if they're living away from home, it's slightly more because obviously they will have um, accommodation fees to pay. And at living at home, they um, students are expected to not have to pay rent. Um, 
so that's why they get less of the maintenance loan. And if students are studying in London, they get to borrow slightly more because it costs more to live and study in London. This chart here just shows an overview of a potential weekly cost for a student, and the um, this includes their rent and any bills, any food, etc. And you can see at the bottom that ranges um, between 220 to 324 pounds a week, which if you look at the total per academic year, which is 40 weeks, you'll see that is 8,800 to 12,960. And if we just move back and have a look at the um, maintenance loan, you'll see that students don't um, get off obviously get that amount so they may fall short of what they need so it's just worth knowing those figures there's a great tool on the UCAS website which is the student budget calculator where you can compare the cost of living between universities it can be handy when choosing a university um, if it's important to you about the costs and that's one of your decisions to um, that's going to sway you to, from one university to the other um, it's quite handy to have a look at the um, the average kind of monthly total that you can expect to pay at that university. So that's a great tool to have a look at on the UCAS website. Another brilliant website that I point students and parents to is the Money Saving Ebs uh, Expert website. Um, there's some really useful information on here. There's some great articles and some really useful tools. Um, this link here just takes you to the student loan parental contribution tool. So you can have a look on there, work out how much you're likely to receive as a student loan based on your household income and how much you may be likely to um, have to contribute towards your child when they're away at university. So how can students help fund their living costs in addition to the maintenance loan? So they may um, be able to use some savings that they've already got or the financial help from parents or family. Most students do get part time work at university um, and also work during their holidays. They might take that as a more of a full time role in the school holidays just to save money for university. We are going to be talking about this in a few slides time, but I do urge people to consider scholarships, grants and bursaries, which are really useful. Um, and don't need to be paid back. Um, students also sometimes take a gap year to work and save up. So we're finding that's increasingly popular that students will defer their year of going to university so that they can work full time for a year just to save up some money to go away to university. So ways that students can save and manage their money, have a think about that university location and accommodation carefully. Prices do vary between um, universities and also at the university um, they will have um, varying prices of accommodation available. So you will have a cheaper room um, where you would share facilities such as a shared bathroom and shared kitchen all the way up to rooms that have their own ensuite, their own kitchen. Um, and some universities even offer a catered option where you will be given a certain amount to spend in the um, canteen each day and that is included in your rent costs. So some students do opt to live at home and commute to keep those costs down. And also we do encourage students to have a think about money saving and independent skills, looking at budgeting. And um, there is some great um, information on the um, money saving ex expert website, but also having a think now about meal planning and um, cooking cheaper meals and kind of learning some basic cooking skills to help keep the costs down so they're not relying on takeaways and canteen food if they can keep the costs down um, by cooking themselves at home. So also it mentions here the careful use for student overdraft, which we'll talk about a bit more on the next slide, but it could be something that is used to manage a large one off payment or a set up cost such as um, a deposit for rent. Um, and also students should have a think about the student discounts that are available, which also on the next um, two slides on, we're going to have a look at this, the student discount card that students can apply for. So on this slide, we've got some do's and don'ts. Um, we do encourage people to have a look and open a student bank account because they can have some great incentives attached to them, um, such as cash back or even a rail card included. Um, it's worth checking that out. And you may also want to consider whether there is a branch of your bank on or near the campus as well, because it can be handy um, to have that available. Some universities also have their own financial advisors um, that can help out with budgeting um, and money saving. So it's worth checking those things out at universities. We don't recommend that students get a credit card because they can be quite dangerous if they're going to be um, tempted to just put everything on the credit card and maybe think about paying that back later. It can be quite difficult to manage. Um, and also we definitely advise against payday loans. They can be quite tempting, but they have very, very high interest rates. 
Um, so we talked about the overdraft before as a, as a way of maybe paying off a one-off payment, such as a deposit um, for um, student accommodation. But it is worth noting that whilst tempting, um, they are interest free for a certain point. Um, so sometimes they'll give you, um, students will have an interest free um, overdraft for the whole of their time at university. But the minute they're not a student anymore, then that interest free will finish and the rates can be quite high and repayment terms can be inflexible. So we do say to students to be cautious of those overdrafts um, and, and to not rely on them. We've talked about student discounts. So the old NUS card is now known as the Totem um, app to have on um, students' phones. And it's a, a student discount card and app that gives them access to huge offers on food and essentials, which include tech, travel, um, fashion, beauty, and a whole lot more. Um, it's definitely worth looking at the Totem website and having a look um, to see if that's something that could help save money whilst away at university. So I also mentioned the Money Saving Expert website, which I do love and, and really rate. Um, they do have student budgeting planners on there. They have spreadsheets, if you like spreadsheets, and um, they have other kind of like ways of um, kind of budgeting and, and managing your money. So it's, do check it out because it is um, there's some really great tips on there. There's also on this slide just some free student budgeting mobile apps that students may wish to um, load up onto their phone, which can help them to kind of keep a track of the money that's going in and out of their bank accounts. So um, they would be worth having a look at. So we're going to talk now about the disabled student allowance. This is support for extra study related costs due to either a disability, a long term condition, which can include mental health issues, or a learning difference such as dyslexia. This is available from Student Finance England and it is applied for at the same time as applying for the student finance account. The disabled students allowance does not need to be paid back. So there is no repaying this um, and no interest added to this. This is just money to keep. It is based on needs and not income. Students will be asked to provide proof and may need to attend a needs assessment. The amount they can get each year for this is up to £26,291 per year. They can apply any time whilst they're at university. And we would recommend that any students who have a disability or a long term condition or learning difference should contact their university disability support team for more advice as well. But we can also help students to access that when they are applying for their student finance. The NHS have a learning support fund for any students who are studying one of their course eligible courses. So this could be um, include nursing, midwifery, all allied health professions such as radiography, physiotherapy, paramedic science, um, dental hygiene and dental therapy. So they get a training grant for £5,000 a year and this is not paid back as well. This is something to keep. Um, and this is only for courses that are eligible um, that the, are listed on the um, NHS learning support um, fund website. But I do encourage students to have a look at that and make sure they apply to that before going to university. Scholarships, bursaries and grants. So these are extra support for those that need it most or to recognise achievement. Just like the other um, things that we've just discussed um, in the previous slides, students do not need to pay these back. They can be to help with living costs or tuition fees. Eligibility may be based on merit, income or personal circumstances. They could be subject related or extracurricular. They can be available from universities, from charities or from employers. Some of these bursaries and scholarships require an application and some don't. Some have other benefits attached to them as well as money, such as having a mentor, a work placement or even accommodation provided for you. According to the Scholarship Hub, an estimated £150 million worth of scholarships go unclaimed each year. So we really encourage students to make sure they check them out and apply for them or as many as possible, really. So the types of scholarship available um, include the academic excellence. So this is for students who um, achieve certain grades or certain UCAS points. There are musical scholarships available for students with musical talent. Personal circumstances, that may be where um, a student lives or um, the type of school they went to. The financial need, which is based on household income. There are scholarships for sporting achievements. So if students are um, excel in a certain type of sport, um, then they may be asked to represent their university in that sport, 
in return for receiving um, a scholarship. Um, there are lots of company scholarships available. And the one that comes to mind for me, because um, we had a student do this a couple of years ago, is the Amazon um, scholarship where students can receive quite a nice sum of money towards their university fees. Um, and they get some work experience out of it as well. So it's a really good um, scholarship to check out. Um, and we send information out to students about the available um, scholarships that they can apply for as well that are attached to companies. There are scholarships that are um, attached to interests and hobbies. So if um, students have um, extracurricular um, activities that are involved in, there may be a scholarship or bursary that is attached to that. We recommend that students check out the scholarship hub just to have a look on there and a browse to see what's available. But also a simple Google search can help you to um, see some of the scholarships that are available um, related to the interests of the individuals. So you would be surprised by the number of strange scholarships available simply just for having a certain surname or living in a certain area or your parents occupation. So we encourage students to think about their career aspirations and check out if there are any industry related scholarships and also to think about their extra uh, extracurricular activities as well. So please have a look on the scholarship hub and have a browse through there. So each university will have their own page dedicated to their scholarships and bursaries and grants. I'm using the University of Kent here because we um, we are they are, they are one of our local universities and they, we do a lot of outreach work with them. So they come into our school and we go to visit their university. So I'm just as an example using their scholarship um, page to show you the kind of things that they have available. So you'll see they have a Kent scholarship for academic excellence. Um, this is £2,000 for stage one, which is the first year of study for students who have achieved at least A star AA at A level and equivalent, which include IBs and BTEC. So at your IB, an A star AA will be um, a 766 and at your BTEC, that will be a distinction star, distinction, distinction. Um, they have a partnership. A partner scholarship, which is up to um, £1,000 per year of study for students who have taken part in their outreach programme. And they also have um, scholarships available for students who agree to be student ambassadors. Sports, music and study abroad scholarships are also available. Each university will have a student hardship fund and they are to aid students who are suffering financial difficulties or need help with their immediate essential living costs. They're intended to cover essential expenses such as food for a limited period of time to allow, allow time for a financial situation to improve. Each university has their own criteria for who can apply for this. Each university will ha have a financial support package as well, which is based on um, household income. So if the household income falls below £30,000 per year and they can satisfy a range of other socio-economic criteria, such as postcode um, or school that they attended, then this is um, something that they can apply for. And it's £3,500 package for the full time study. So across their three years or four years. So they have £1,500 for the first year. £1,000 for the second year and £1,000 for the third year. Now, all of these bursaries and scholarships that we've just talked about that um, are shown here on the um, University of Kent page, and you'll also find them on individual university pages, they're not paid back. These are This is money that students can keep. So let's move on to how to apply for the student loan. So students apply for their um, loans online on the Student Finance England website. It can be found on the .gov website forward slash student finance. Student Finance England applications open around March for the September entry. So for students that are going to university in September 2025, they will apply for um, their student finance in March 2025. The recommended deadline is the end of May, and this is so that student, it gives student finance long enough to process the application and make sure that money is in their account at the right time when they start university. They do not need confirmed course details, just an idea of their first choice because this can be changed later. If the means tested element of the maintenance loan is applied for, then parents will be emailed a link to submit their information online. If there are two parents or a parent and a partner that live at that address with the student, both of these individuals will be emailed a separate link and will need to do a separate application details. The checklist for applying for student finance. 
students will need a working email address that is not a school email address and one that they can get access to and read emails in. They will need a bank account in their own name. So this any maintenance money that they get will be paid directly into their bank account and it cannot be into a name that is not theirs. They will need their university and course details. If they don't have a use on their site to go for and update that later. Students will need an in-date UK passport for identification purposes. If they don't have one, they can upload a copy of their birth certificate. It used to be that they would have to send that away um, in the post, but now they accept um, scanned copies to be um, added online on the online account. So if they haven't got a passport, they can use a birth certificate. If applying for the means tested amount, they will need to enter their parent email address and parent and a, it could be two parents or parent and a partner. If both living at that house, they'll both need that e both email addresses will need to be entered. Parents will need to supply their national insurance number and income details for the previous year. Information about any support they're already getting, as well as health evidence will be required if they are applying for the disabled student allowance. So we're going to talk about the repayment of the student loan now. It's not like other loans. About half of students are predicted to pay back all of their loan and repayments go up and down with earnings. Nobody else is responsible for the payment. Only the persons um, who's the, uh, whose name is this, uh, the student finance was taken out in. It will not prevent mortgage applications. It does not affect credit scores. Um, obviously, if applying for a mortgage, they will ask um, about a student loan just because they need to know how much the outgoings would be for each month. But it does not affect um, any kind of loan um, being applied for. Monthly repayments depend on what the student is earning and not what they owe back. So repayments start in the April after leaving university. And repayments start when the individual earns £25,000 or more. The repayments are 9% of everything that is earned above that £25,000. After 40 years, any outstanding balance is wiped. Should students starting university after August 2023 are on Plan 5. I have a graphic in a couple of slides time which, um, that will just show you the difference between um, Plan 5 and the previous plan because in 2023, Student finance changed slightly, and I'll just show you those changes in a couple of slides time. So just to talk about uh, the monthly repayments, they are only based on income. So if the student owes £6,000 or £60,000, the repayments would be the same for both of those students if they were earning the same amount of money. So you'll just see here, if a student was earning £20,000, then their monthly repayment would be zero because they're not earning above that threshold. And then you can see that the payments are moving up as they move above the threshold. So for students earning £26,000, they're only just above that threshold and they would expect to pay £7.50 back per month. That is taken directly from their salary through the pay as you earn system, just the same way that national insurance and tax is taken out. So students will never be responsible for having to make a payment or, or to remember to send a payment off. As soon as they earn over the £25,000, those payments will start coming out. Um, at the same time as tax and national insurance. And you can see that it goes up, obviously, when the student's earning £30,000 a year, their re monthly repayments are £37.50, and at £40,000, those repayments are £113. Interest is added to the balance of the loan, um, but does not affect the monthly repayments. So although it's accruing interest, as soon as the loan is taken out whilst they're at university, the loan, the repayments are just based on how much you've earned above the £25,000. The interest rate applied is based on the retail price index and it is re re regularly reviewed. So interest may affect the length of time it takes to repay the loan, but any balance that is wiped at the end of the 40 years will include that interest as well, so they will pay nothing else after the 40 years. So here's the graphic that I was just talking about that just shows you that the students are now on plan five. So in 2023, it changed slightly and you can just see on this graphic the changes that happened. So the amount that they earn went down a little bit. So the 9% over £25,000 instead of over £27,295. The maximum term, so they had 30 years, it was scrapped after 30 years and it's now scrapped after 40 years. It was... Um, it was inflation rate plus 3% before with the interest added, but now it's just inflation rate. So there is no real cost. Um, it just goes up in line with inflation. 
And the state pays um, 19 pence per pound. It used to pay 44 pence per pound. So now 52% of students are likely to clear their debt in full. So a to-do list, um, have things to do now and have a think about now are you may wish to go on the student finance calculator and work out how much um, your child may be entitled to borrow from the student maintenance loan. Then you might want to go and, and check out the yearly halls fees at different universities. And then you might want to work out taking away those um, halls fees from the estimated loan to see if there's any shortfall at all in um, how much um, the students are getting from their maintenance loan and how much they need to pay out for those halls. So just down the right hand side of this, there's a couple of examples where um, the student is kind of like falling, they're down £22 a week. So how are they going to make up that um, shortfall? Are they going to get a job to cover that extra £22 a week? Or are they going to ask for money from parents or family? So it's just starting to have a think about those and thinking about what the implications will be. Consider other income support sources, including bursaries and scholarships. We really recommend that. We cannot recommend enough that you have a look into bursaries and scholarships that are available. In the spring term um, of year 13, students will be applying for those student loans online. Um, and we will send reminders out um, to students and to parents to say that student finance is now open and they can apply for this. And they may also wish to, in the summer, get a summer job, um, practice some of those independent skills like such as cooking and budgeting, um, update the student loan account if anything changes. For example, they um, have changed the course or the university or their living location. Here's some useful websites that you may want to have a look at, um, which are the um, a lot on the .gov website about student finance calculators, how to repay the loan. There's some information on the disabled student allowance there, as well as the NHS Learning Support Fund and the Scholarship Hub. Um, there's a link there to the Martin Lewis website, um, the Money Saving Expert website, and also um, the Totem um, app as well, which is your old NUS student discount card. So as always, if you have any questions, please do get in touch. Um, I'm here to help with any questions regarding this. I, I do this year in, year out, so I'm, I'm hoping they'll be able to answer any of your questions regarding the student finance. So do please get in touch with me in the school um, and I'm, I'm here to help if you need me. Thank you for listening.